If you go and read the comments on all of my videos that are not about small engine repair, you'll find a lot of people asking me to make more videos about small engine repair. Trash picked lawnmowers especially. So here you go. I was out walking my dog about 15 minutes ago and I just happened on this one set out for garbage collection. It's a uh, yard machines, 22 inch by MTD. I would say this is a late model lawnmower in the sense that it's probably less than five years old. Um, and it, it looks pretty good under all the dirt actually. But the one thing that makes this unique, that was the reason that I picked it up and I'm making a video about it, is it has this Chinese Honda clone engine on it. Now a lot of people, when they see these Chinese engines, they just kind of run screaming for the hills and don't even bother fixing them. I'm no such person though. I don't really think that these are a lot worse than any other engine on the market today. If you look at most big name lawnmower manufacturers, they've dropped Briggs and Stratton and Honda completely and are exclusively using these Chinese engines. So without further ado, I'm just gonna kind of dive into this. Um, I literally haven't even pulled the string on it yet. I don't know, the engine could be completely seized. Um, so I'm gonna do that. Now one thing I noticed about this machine is it has a manual, I'm not sure if you can see that, it has a manual choke, which is actually better. Um, one thing I've noticed on a lot of these Chinese engines is the automatic choke mechanism tends to fail, um, and then they become really, really hard to start and people get rid of them. But because this is a manual choke, it um, is a lot better since there's just one less thing to break. Let me just give it a pull here and see what happens. Well, it feels like it's got pretty good compression. I'll go ahead and put the choke on and see if it starts. Nothing. Let's see, we have gas. No, it's bone dry. So that's actually not a bad sign. Okay, so I'm gonna take the air filter off here and I'm just gonna take a look at it. It actually doesn't look that bad. I was expecting it to be way worse and possibly drenched in gas. One thing I do notice, as soon as I took the air filter off, it smells terrible. Um, definitely full of old fuel. Um, I don't know if this lawnmower has had gas in it this season. It doesn't really smell like it. Everything just smells really old and stale. So probably the person put it away with gas in it and went to start it this year and it just wouldn't go and so they threw it out. Now, in order to clean the carburetor on this, it's actually fairly straightforward. You've got two bolts right here, well, two long studs with nuts on the end, and they kind of hold this sandwich of the entire intake side of the engine together. They hold the air box on, uh, the carburetor, and some, some gaskets, as well as the governor mechanism. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a, I believe it's 10 millimeter, and we're just going to pull these off really quick and take a look at the carburetor. Okay, so I went and grabbed a 10 millimeter and I put it on a little ratchet handle here. And we're just going to go ahead and pull this off. Now one of the reasons I said that I didn't really mind these Chinese engines is because for the most part, they're pretty easy to work on. Um, they're not really convoluted like some other brands, looking at you Tecumseh. Um, I just noticed also there's another screw right back here that uh, holds this air box thing on. So. Oof, that one's a bit tight. Put this around here. If you don't have one of these things, an L, if you don't have an L bar, man, these things are great. That one's actually a bolt. So lift this off like that. And just kind of put that off to the side, I think. And, uh, let me grab you off the stand and take a better look at the carburetor. I lied. You're staying on the stand for the time being because I kind of need two hands for this. So basically, the carburetor, as I mentioned, is on two long studs that come out of the head of the engine. And so in order to take it off, it's pretty straightforward. You just kind of slide the carburetor out like this. You can pull some of the slack out of the fuel line. And you can slide the carburetor this way enough to get a pair of pliers and take the fuel line off, which I'll do right now. Um, toolbox really quick. It's got a little spring clamp thing on it. Um, you just kind of squeeze here and uh, work back. 
like that. And you can go ahead and remove the fuel line. See if fuel is going to come gushing out of it or not. Nope, bone dry. So then you can slide the carburetor a little bit further. And one nice feature is these little um, little plastic parts, I guess, that interface the governor rods to the actual shafts in the carburetor. Um, they have little cutouts, so if you twist them like this, the rods just pop right out of the top, and then you can uh, just kind of lift the little spring out. Um, the choke pops off when you take the carburetor off like this, make sure I'm still in frame, um, and then you can just twist it sideways and uh, the carburetor just pops right off, which is really, really convenient compared to some other engines where you have to disassemble, you know, three quarters of the lawnmower to get the thing apart. Um, most of them don't even have the screw right here in the uh, the back of the air box. See? Um, so it's literally just two bolts to take everything out. Okay, little change of scenery. I'm here on the bench now. Got the carburetor off the engine. And I actually went and put some gloves on as well because uh, i trying not to get my hands too unbelievably filthy. So I loosened off this nut here, but I haven't actually opened up the carburetor yet. I did notice, however, when I took this nut off, gas didn't come pouring out of the carburetor, so I'm assuming there's no gas inside it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and unscrew this bowl nut here. There we go. That's just a 10 millimeter, by the way. We can go ahead and pull the bottom off the here, the little bowl. As you can see, this is pretty bad. Got a lot of what looks to be ethanol residue. Um, usually this happens when the lawnmower sits and the ethanol, which is, you know, basically plant-based and so has a lot of water in it, separates out of the uh, petroleum and uh, causes all that corrosion. Hopefully the float works. Um, yeah, it's, it's moving there. Maybe a little stiff, might have to clean that. So I'll go ahead and pull this pin out here. Like that. And we can take the float and the needle out like that. And uh, see, so make sure that's in focus. The needle actually, it looks pretty good. So does the float, just dirty. And then the thing that we want to get at is the jet, which is up inside here. And the way you take that out is you get a long flathead screwdriver. You can just slide that up in here like this. And you unscrew the jet if it will come out. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. If it won't, get this out of here. Oh, it looks like I need a slightly larger one. But not one that large. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, I went and found my carburetor screwdriver, which was a normal screwdriver that I shaved down for unscrewing carburetor jets. And I'll uh, just see if I can get this out of here so that we can clean it. Just realized I wasn't super in frame, but hopefully you saw that in action. All right. You can just... There we go. So there is the metering jet. Let's see if I can... Uh, Get that into focus here. Just so you can see, there is a tiny hole that the uh, the gas flows through in order to meter how much it's going to go into the engine. And as you can see, by the fact we can see no light at all through it, that is completely blocked. So this is the root cause of why the lawnmower was not running, because it literally couldn't suck any fuel into the engine. So I'm going to clean that out, and what I'm going to use to clean that out here is a tool that I think that anybody who works on small engines should have. It is a caster carburetor cleaning tool, and you can buy these on Amazon. I think they're like $15. They are such a worthwhile investment. Um, basically, all they are is a set of little picks and a couple little brushes. Um, see, there, there are a bunch of little tiny like rods of uh, various sizes, and you use these to clean out, you know, all the little ports in the carburetors that, uh, that get all clogged up over time. So what I'm going to do, first off, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take all of these parts that have all this awful gross varnish on them, and I'm going to go and soak them 
in some carburetor cleaner and I'll be right back and then we can clean that jet out. Okay, all the parts are cleaned. I used some steel wool and some carburetor cleaner to just get all that varnish off of all the aluminum. Um, as long as it's not flaking off, it's not usually a big deal. You could put it back together like that, but I just like to clean everything up um, just to mitigate further problems down the road. Now, the problem I'm actually having with this jet is I can't clean it with this tool because the little tiny metering hole is too small. So I'm going to show you another trick that I have for cleaning these when the, uh, the jet hole is too small to use you know, a normal carburetor cleaner tool. Okay, so here's the trick. You get one of these wire brush wheels for a drill and you remove one of the wires from it. Just, just one. And you grab it with a pair of needle nose pliers. I'm trying to do this through the viewfinder so it's like remote surgery. And then you can slide that through the little tiny hole in the jet like this. It'll go. There we go. See little piece of dirt that fell out? That's what was clogging up the jet. So, just slide that through there a couple times. Make sure it's all cleaned out, like so. Twist it around maybe, go back and forth, like that. Make sure it, you know, kind of goes all the way through it, like so. Twisting it around. And now, when we look through this jet, can you see the light through it? There we go. So it's all cleaned out now and now the fuel will flow. So now it's basically just a matter of putting it all back together again, which is really straightforward. Just take the jet, drop it into here like this, get your screwdriver, and uh, just tighten it down. You can actually watch through the little hole in the side as it's being tightened down um, to make sure you've gotten it down all the way. There you go, all installed. Next, you're gonna get the float. Now I'm gonna just go ahead and slide that down in there. And I'm gonna get the little rod, put that in here like so. Maybe it goes in the other direction. Let's try putting it in from this side. Sometimes they only go in one way. There we go. See, and it pops into place. I'm going to get the bowl, I'm going to go ahead and put the bowl on. And one thing you want to remember is how this goes onto the engine. So it actually goes onto the engine like this. So what you want to make sure is that you have the drain hole facing the front. So in the fall, you can drain the old gas out and that doesn't happen again. Go ahead and put this bolt in, tighten it up, get the 10 millimeter. There we go, we're ready to put it back on the engine. Okay, so if you can hear me over my neighbor mowing his lawn, I'm gonna go ahead and put the carburetor back onto the engine now. It's pretty straightforward to do. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hook the choke rod into that like that, and then uh, just sort of slide this in here, line the gas line, and then when you get it in about halfway, you can put the governor rod on, like, that and the really really small spring which just hooks in there like so you can see that and uh, we're also going to put on the fuel line which just pushes on here like this uh, and get it without rolling the lawnmower into the next county there we go and then you just simply want to push the carburetor back onto the engine like that and uh, let me grab my pliers here and we will uh, put that little clip on Right. Slide this over a little hump in the fuel line where it connects over the uh, carburetor inlet. All right, there we go. And uh, I'm gonna now put the air box back on like that. Oops, what was that? Oh, I see. So the air box here has actually got these little metal spacers that go into the holes right here around those rods coming out of the engine, the studs, um, and I accidentally pushed one of those out with the threads while I was trying to put it back in. So the last thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna tighten up these three 10 millimeter bolts here. 
The only reason I'm showing you this is because I didn't really show you taking them out in a super clear angle, so I'm just gotta put these back in now. I can do this without completely obscuring the camera's view. So on my way into the backyard to test it out, I noticed gas was dripping out of the bottom of the carburetor bowl, and I assumed the float must be sticking, except then I realized I'm just stupid and I forgot to tighten up the bowl nut. So I've done that and it stopped dripping. So without further ado, let's see if it'll start. I hope it will, fingers crossed. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put the choke on here. Here we go. 